Good evening, everybody. We might open our Bibles and turn to the book of Exodus, if we could, please. Um, we will go um, and we'll start off in uh, Exodus chapter 3. And um, Tonight, I just wanted to, you know, individually, uh, and even you know, to myself, pose a bit of a question of, you know, how, how will we be remembered? Um, you know, and it sort of stems from one of our nighttime prayer sessions with the kids. Um, so, you know, every night we... We, we pray with the kids before they go to bed and, and normally, you know, we, we sort of, you know, you ask the kids, what do, what do they want to pray about tonight? And, you know, generally the, the, they always want to pray for the pastors. So, so we always pray for, the, you know, the pastors and the oversight. And um, gen- then generally it sort of goes on to, you know, whatever bumps, bruises, scratches, you know, little sore or whatever it is they've, they've picked up and, and stuff like that. And um, But this one night probably... I know, three or four weeks ago, um, you know, Parker asked if we could pray for Jesus, and you know, sort of prompted a bit of a question. You know, I was like, "Son of God, what does he need prayer for?" And and Parker just said that he, he prays that that Jesus would would return soon, would return soon, and then we would all get to to go home to his house, and. You know, and I guess along with a, with a few other things sort of that, that have happened in the last you know, month or so, it, it got me thinking about you know, the inheritance that, that awaits for, for, for us should we remain faithful. It got me thinking about you know, um, that whether, whether we rise to meet the Lord in the air or, or probably more prevalent, you know, if, if, we, if we fall asleep before Christ comes to call the faithful home, you know, how, how will we be remembered? What sort of a legacy would would we would we leave behind and and you know what what would people remember about us and i'm just going to look at um just a couple of scriptures here on on, on moses so exodus 3 and i'm just going to start in verse 6 and we read moreover he said i am the god this is and this is god talking to, to moses here i am the god of thy father the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob and Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by, by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land, and a, la- and a large unto a land, flowing with milk and honey. And, and it goes on... Um, goes on there but you know and we know in this chapter that Moses is is called is called by God you know to be his to be his mouthpiece to to his chosen people he's called to deliver the Israelites out of the bondage and captivity that they that they had in Egypt you know to to deliver them from there you know to to journey through through you know through the wilderness and to take them to this this land to to take to them an inheritance as it said you know a large land you know one that flows with 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 milk and honey and you know we read and as you we're not going to read all about you know really Moses tonight but we we as as we would know and, and we've heard of before Moses was a was a great man of of faith he had his own doubts and insecurities about who he was but it didn't matter what, what he put, you know, that he wasn't. God always was prepared to fill the gap and, and was prepared to always, you know, be that, be that sort of mediator and give Moses what he lacked. And, and we read on, on, on his journey that, um, you know, they were, in, they were in the wilderness 40 years. So if we consider that, you know, that the Israelites, they were, sl- they were slaves, they, they were under bondage, they, they probably weren't, weren't treated all that well. And we know that in the wilderness, you know, they had times where they murmured, they doubted, that they asked that, or, or wished that they'd be back in captivity because, you know, they'd have simple things as, you know, food and water, um, you know, a place to, to lay their heads and stuff like that. And so while the people would often murmur and, and doubt and, and look back on, on what they had, Moses Moses just would commune with God and would be able to deliver, would be able to deliver the, the instruction of God to the people. But in this 40 years that, that, they, you know, that they were out and about, um, you think of the generational faith that, that, would have, that would have gone from person to person. If we just you know, even look around the room tonight, you know, we've got children as young as 
I don't know, a baby or babies up the back there and, and people that are reasonably aged in years. So if we think about the lifespan of someone over 40 years, you're probably seeing, you know, children being born, you know, people becoming parents, you know, people becoming grandparents and so on. But there's this constant reminder about, you know, the, the promises of God, you know, as, as Moses commune, communes and talks to God and, and, the, and the people see the provisions as, as they're walking in the wilderness, you know, at no point were they, were they left alone to be able to, to fend for themselves. But there was just this generational faith that went from, you know, from, from person to person and so on. And we might just cruise to, to Numbers 20. You know, as, as this was the beginning of Moses' story, you know, we know, we know he's about his birth and, and he, he, you know, it really was a miracle that he survived because uh, you know, he, was, he, he was destined or he should have been killed, killed at birth and, and, he, was ra- and he was raised by, by the Pharaoh you know, and, and in, and in the, the sort of the situation there, he could have had you know, that, that sort of realm at his fingertips. But, but he, he saw and remembered the affliction of his people when he, when he slew the Egyptian and then went to, you know, and, and abode in Midian until he was called of, of the Lord. But Moses' journey, you know, as someone that was called to liberate the people, was called to, you know, deliver them out of captivity, you know, and to take them to the promised land, you know, he, he fell short of, of entering into the promised land. I'm just going to read that in Numbers 20, and we'll start in, in verse 7. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth this give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so shalt thou give the congregation of, of their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he fed unto them, Here now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Moses lifts up his hand with his rod. He smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. You know, but we know as we read this that, that Moses didn't listen to the, the instructions of God at this time. You know, he, he was, he can, he can, as you can sort of read the writing, he, he was quite angry at, at the people, and, and perhaps, you know, did, did something out of, out of anger and, and the Lord speaks to Moses um, and Aaron and says because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel therefore you shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them this is the water of Meribah because the children oh, no, sorry we don't need to read that bit but you know, so we get there that because Moses disobeyed the, you know, the word of the Lord the Lord then said to him you know, you you will not enter. You will not enter into the land that I've promised my people. You know, you, you you take them there, but but you will you will you will not dwell in there. You will not you will not go in. And you know, the people who would have followed Moses for this time, and and Moses himself, you know, through walking and talking and communing with God, would have thought the entire time that you know he's leading God's people into the promised land, you know, and, and there together that they are going to establish their home, that they are there together going to establish their dwelling. Also, we might need to clock up, Steve. I would hate to go over. Um, but, you know, even though Moses' ending probably wasn't as, as he would have expected it to be, you know, and, and probably the people that followed him, you know, in the wilderness wasn't was it expected to be you know that's not what Moses is remembered for you know, he's not remembered for, for the end of his life but rather when we think about Moses you know we, we we consider you know such things as you know him you know him being called out of the burning bush you know to begin his relationship with the Lord you know the miracle of how he survived survived birth um, you know t- taking and, and parting the red parting the Red Sea and and the and the, uh, the, the the children of Israel, you know, journeying through there, you know, going going up into the mountain, you know, and bringing down the, the Ten Commandments, you know, the, you know, when we read about the tabernacle and and so much many more things, you know, and Moses's legacy was was set before him, regardless of how his his life ended up, you know, and and what he's remembered for isn't the end, but rather, you know, the other ninety percent of 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 how he lived. You know, in the Lord, and 
and a legacy and just thinking about how will we be remembered it's something that can span generations you know and um, this generate this generational faith that, that Moses had presented throughout you know throughout the, um, the the children of Israel but you know and I remember a few years ago um, I've mentioned it a couple of times but I I was I was confronted with um, with with as the doctor said meeting my maker and um, you know my mortality became you know quickly sort of up that, that my that my time was up and you know, I, I, I got quite sick quite quickly and, and ended up being in you know, end-stage um, liver failure and, you know, it, it got to the point where, you know, it, it was that quick that there was nothing that the doctors could do and I remember, um, you know, I, I had in a moment where, where the emotion was sort of on me and I was sort of at home and I was having a bit of a sook by myself and, you know, a bit of a cry and thinking about, you know, this is my life, and you know, I'm I'm not going to see things like that. You know, the kids grow up, and and you know, a whole a whole heap of a whole heap of stuff. But I remember, you know, once once the emotion sort of passed, it was it was great timing. Our brother came around and, and prayed and prayed for me, and you know, if, if just a few days later, I went back to the doctor, and you know, I sat down. I had some tests in the meantime, and, and sat down with the doctor, and he and he talked to me that. You know, he thought that that day we were going to be planning, you know, how I wanted to end my life and, you know, how I wanted to break the news. He's Michelle's doctor as well, but, you know, break the news to my wife and to my kids that, you know, I was, I was, I was going to, you know, going to leave this life. And he couldn't believe this, this, this just dramatic turnaround that had happened in the space, in the space of a week where I, you know, I was, where he thought that this was it, you know, my, my life was over to all of a sudden, you know, there was there was nothing wrong with me. You know, I was I was I was instantly healed. And once the once the emotion went, you, you know, you start to think about you know how are you how are you going to be remembered? You know, at the time for me it was you know will my kids you know remember me when they're older? You know, I sort of hadn't comprehended in my head. You know, it was all happening pretty quick when I got told. You know, sort of the emotion, and you're like. You know, will will they remember? Will they remember in 10, 15 years that you know that they've got a dad, or that they've got you know, or, or who I was, or or anything like that at all? But you know, but that's not that's not the end of the story, and 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 that doesn't have to be you know the end of our stories you know, for, for how we're remembered. You know, at no point at no point in time did I did I consider oh geez I wish I worked more or or earned more money or. Or, or spent more time, you know, buying houses or, or, or doing whatever. It was about, you know, the real, the real stuff that was on the heart. And I'm sure if, if those of us that maybe have been in this situation or have, have lost a loved one or, you know, experienced some form of, you know, deep, deep tragic loss, that, you know, you're never thinking about the, the sort of the natural practical sort of stuff. It's always about, you know, the, the person and you're remembering the time the times you've spent with them and and these real important memories and um you know as I mentioned about before about you know this generational faith that followed that followed the um the, the children of Israel you know as, as as they walked with Moses you know and and you see the same with Abraham and Sarah that that four times you know God renews this covenant with with, with Abraham, you know, that, that, that he would you know, be a father of many nations, you know, that his seed would be as, as the grains of sand and, and, and whatnot, you know, and he has to renew this covenant four times with him, you know, to bring it back to remembrance and, and they take matters into their own hands, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But then, you know, Sarah, you know, in her, in her old age, laughing, laughing at God, conceives and, and bears a son, Isaac. But, you know, what what we are told in this life doesn't have to be the end of our story. It doesn't it doesn't have to be you know how we are remembered. And and I've got a I've got a slide and I just want to go through a couple of things on here. So we might get that that one that one slide up if we could please. Now I do have I do have express permission to um to share this by by some of the parents. Um, I was at a I was at a birthday party for my niece a little while ago, and I saw. And I saw this, and I saw that these kids all all lined up, you know, one one by one and stuff like that. And and what I began to think about was, 
you know, the, the over over generations, what what has happened is 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 their is their grandparents, their their parents have have come to know have come to know the Lord and have had have had Jesus Christ intervene in, in their life, where they've where they've received the Holy Spirit, they've begun as as Moses did in the burning bush, this relationship with God, and that they've then had things to cling on to. You know, they, they've sat in meetings like this, they've raised their children in, 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 meeting, in meetings like this and, and gathered together, you know, in, in groups of people like this and surrounded them with good things so that, so that sometimes when, you know, when life, when life gives us hard times to follow and, and things happen that we don't quite expect, you know, we don't have to settle for that. And I just was looking at this photo, you know, the, the girls on the day and stuff like that as it was being taken. And, you know, we've got Chloe, um, you know, Chloe Pierce is there and her sister, her sister Isabel. You know, neither of them, neither of them should be alive. That, that their grandmother was, was, unable to, was unable to bear children, but the Lord miraculously intervened in, in, in their life. And, and in turn, you know, that their mum was able to be born and, and now that she's then gone on to have children and, and they are now raising, raising their children up in the same way that, that they were brought up. You know, to, to be able to rely on this, this same generational faith that, that, sort of, that comes so that when they cling to their remembrance, you know, they're remem- able to remember these good things that have happened you know, to them. We've got, um, and I'll read some of this out. I, unfortunately, I asked the parents to give it to me in you know, the Reader's Digest version. Otherwise, we'd, we'd be here all night. And it would be good stuff, though. But we've got you know, Jasmine, Jasmine Goody there. And you know, after multiple miscarriages, you know, doctors had completed an autopsy on one of um, um, the, the, the fetuses um, that were, were dying um, within, within Angie. She was unable to sort of carry a baby. And it showed that there were X chromosome issues. And this meant that they were 0% chance of having a, a living, healthy baby girl and that the chances of having a baby boy were only slightly better because, you know, um, she had a brother, Isaac, that had been born earlier. Um, but when the doctors said that it was impossible for, you know, f- for them to be able to have a baby girl, you know, it was something that was on, you know, um, Angie, Angie's heart, you know, I remember Peter would say that he had this instantaneous faith that the moment that Mannon said it was impossible that they were going to have a baby girl and, and, and that God had answered. You know, I've got you know, my daughter Olivia up there who had an enlarged ventricle on the right side of, um, of her brain um, and there wasn't, also wasn't quite enough fluid um, you know, getting, in, getting into her, her, her spine and, and we were told by, by the doctors that Olivia would have you know, no meaningful quality of life and, and, that we sh- and that we should terminate the pregnancy immediately. And, you know, and, and, through, and through prayer, Olivia was, you know, Olivia was instantly healed. You've got Ariel down in the front, who um, you know, um, and Stevie, Stevie um, had suffered from um, severe pain for a very long time so that, um, that when they decided that they wanted to, to start a family, they went and saw a specialist for, for a diagnosis and, and it turned out that she had endometriosis. Um, and from that, so that point in time, it, it took a year before Stevie w- w- was healed and, and fell pregnant with Ariel. And, um, and in that year, they, they learned to put their full trust in the Lord. Um, and, and, af- and after having Ariel, Stevie had all these other symptoms and had to go back to a specialist. And, and um, the specialist was incredibly surprised that, that, that Stevie had been able to have a baby because all of the symptoms and, 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 all, of, and all of the tests had sort of shown that... Um, that there was no way that she should have been able to, to be able to conceive a baby. We've got Poppy there as well, and um, you know, Poppy was Poppy was healed, um, or she was born, sorry, with um, a severe meconium aspiration, and um, so when she was born, um, you know, she had this heaving of her, of her chest and flaring of nostrils. Um, you know, she was quite laboured, and a lot of this was, was also due to you know, the, the, the trauma of birth. She was taken for x-rays in the ICU, and it showed that she'd, um, besides swallowing this meconium, um, she'd, um, she'd aspirated large amounts into her lungs, and through prayer over the course of the next couple of days, Poppy was completely healed. Yeah, and after leaving, um, leaving hospital, um, her parents were, were told by, by a paediatrician that they were, lucky, they were lucky that she was alive due to the seriousness 
of, of the condition that she'd had and, and some other factors. Uh, we can, thanks for the slides, Steve. We can take that one down now. And we might, we might turn, if we could, please, to, to Luke 12. Now, you know, and there'll come a point in time, you know, what we've seen there is we've seen, you've seen parents who have been able to rely upon, you know, the inheritance that God has promised us. You know, we, in our hands, we've got, we've got the Bible, you know, the word of life. And in that has so many different promises that, that you and I are bound to inherit. Different things maybe for the life to come or, or for in a time of need here and now that, that in any situation we can call upon the Lord and, and he can intervene, he can deliver and he can set us free. But, you know, th- but there'll come a point in time where, where as, as their parents and, and grandparents before them, you know, the, these children will be able to recognise you know, the magnitude of, of their own stories that as, as babies, you know, or, or even before entering this world, you know, that, that God has made a pathway so that, you know, that they can, they can live. And, you know, but for the time being, you know, their, their, connection, their connection they have, you know, with, with God primarily becomes through the enjoyment they have of, 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 being in this, of being in this fellowship and, and, being, and being around a, a positive and enjoyable relationship with, with, with this church. And, and at a time, they will be able to realise their own you know, relationship with God as, as Moses did in, in the burning bush. And Luke 12, and we'll go verse 15, if we could please. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man bought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods." And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool this night, thou soul, thou soul shall be required of thee. Then who, sh- then who sh- shall these things be which thou hast provided? So he that layeth up treasure for himself is not rich toward God and you know and, and for you and I and you know if we if we focus only on on the things of this life and not just you know a, a money perspective but on on pleasure on, on status um, on, on the opinions on the opinions and, and the wishes of, of other people of other people you know the more we will we'll continue to, to, to keep of ourselves and store up and build up that you know that, that when we're gone, it'll it'll be good for no one, and the, and the more things the more things we put between, you know, that, that we store up for ourselves, the bigger becomes the gap between you know ourselves ourselves and the Lord. The bigger and the harder it is for us to be able to not just to serve the Lord, but to enter the kingdom of God, because, you know, we we're in a life that demands so much from us at at every single time, you know. Um, I like to think I've got a pretty cruisy job, but in the last few weeks, I've got a pretty big reality check as far as, you know, the, the work that I do. And, and, a lot, and a lot of us have to work, you know, long hours. You know, some people second jobs. Some people have got, you know, like significant health issues or, or other problems in their life that can consume so much of our time, that can consume so much of our thoughts that, that it can begin to, to build a wall between us and the good things of God. It can, it can begin to build a wall between us and, and seeing and living inside of, of God's promises. Um, you know, there's a scripture in Proverbs 22 that says, um, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a servant to the lender. You know, and, and, and you see that, and obviously at the moment we know there's the, the, war, the war in, in Ukraine with Russia invading there, and, and you can look at now now coming out the other side of you know the, the the pandemic and you know there's still health stuff happening but you're seeing more and more that you know the interest rates and things like that are you know all on the way up and, and more and more the more we have slaved to this life and the more we've you know 
in, in essence, you know, borrow, borrowed or given to this life, you know, it's going to be tenfold what's, what's required of us, you know, you know, do we think about where we put our time, you know, where do we, where do we put our energy, you know, Okay. In, 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 I was funny, I was, I was talking to Kevin before that, you know, yesterday I was just having this, this time of prayer and I just thought, Lord, you know, whatever it is today, Lord, you know, use me wherever you can and, and, you know, and it doesn't matter what it is. And, you know, and it didn't happen the way I thought it was would, but the Lord provided and the Lord just gave this opportunity just to be able to serve him. And, you know, in the, in the, scheme, in the scheme of life, you know, thinking about our own mortality, you know, what, what will our legacy be? You know, do we want to be someone that's, that, that, work, that worked all day, that worked all day but forsook time with their family or forsook time with the Lord? Do we want to be somebody that prioritised every other aspect of our life and just thought, you know, when I've got, when I've got more time, then I, can, then, I, then, I, then I can serve my God? Or somebody that's, that's built their life around, you know, fitting God in where, wherever it sort of works in the calendar? Or do we want to be somebody that... You know, as as Moses did in in the, you know, in the midst of the burning bush, when 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 the Lord called him, you know, just just went with it, despite his insecurities, despite his in, his perceived inadequacies. You know, he just he just went for it, and 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 you saw amazing things in the course of his life. Um, you know, that let not convenience be be the key over our own desire. You know, let let desire be be the thing that that we have. You know, that we desire to be around the good things of God, not just when it's convenient. We might flick to Revelation twenty one. We're going to finish there. Um, just following on from Parker, he had COVID last week, and over the weekend, me and him had a bit of father son bonding time at home while Michelle and the girls were down at um, the the family's camp down there, and and Parker and I we we had this moment. In, in the backyard and we you know, had, a, had a bonfire out and started talking about, you know, we started talking about you know, what he said about in his prayer about praying for, Je- you know, for, for Jesus to come back and, and we started talking about you know, the inheritance that, that God has in store for his people. We started talking, you know, we were looking into the fire, into the stars and, and we talked about, you know, we talked about that the, the, the goods and the treasures in on this earth one day will all burn. We started talking about that one day, just as the clouds had 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 separated in the sky and we just had this clear view of the moon, you know, that it's gonna be like that when Jesus returns, that every eye will see, you know, just like the the sky parting and you just see, you know, Jesus coming back with, with the heaven with the heavenly host. You know, that there's this incredible inheritance lined up for God's people. And you know, and, and like like Moses, you know, leading leading the Israelites out of bondage, you know, through the trials and tribulations of the wilderness and to the promised land, you know, so too is it with you and I and the Holy Ghost. You know, that, that you and I would follow the Holy Ghost, you know, the cloud by day, that the pillar of fire by night, and that it would lead us, you know, at the moment you and I, we're we're in the wilderness. We're on this journey and, and, and life throws us all sorts of things. You know, but 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 we are to follow it until until we enter the land, you know, flowing with milk and honey. Until we enter the rest of, until we enter the rest of the Lord, because there's this incredible promise that outweighs any promise or that, that we can have in this life, you know. And just Revelation 21, just um, just start in verse one here. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And when he sat upon the throne, he said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give unto him that is a thirst the fountain of the water of life freely. And he, and he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, 
and he shall be my son. You know, what an incredible promise there for those that remain faithful to the word of God, for those that listen to the calling, like Moses did, you know, in in Midian there, when, when God appeared to him in the most unlikely of places in the burning bush, you know. God appears to you and I in the most unlikely of of places, in in the most obscure moments in time. Sometimes we're ready, other times we've got no idea. But it's up to you and I to hear the call because, you know, we're just going to read in verse 8, this for those that, you know, that, that, that don't, that don't hear, you know, that don't respond. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderous, the whoremongers, the sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You know, as, as Parker and I looked into the bonfire on, on Saturday night and all we saw was, all we saw was the flames, you know, that is what is in store for us, folks. If we don't, if, if we don't grab hold of the inheritance we've been given, you know, if we don't, if we don't consider how we want to be remembered, not just here, but how we want to be remembered in life to come, we just finish in verse 22 of the same chapter. And I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it and the Lamb is the light thereof and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it and the gates of it shall not be shut up all all by day for there shall be no night there and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it and there shall in no wise neither enter in anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie but they which are written in the lamb's book of life you know what an amazing promise, you know, when, when we stand before the throne of God, you know, when, when the will of Jesus Christ is read out on the day, on the, on the day of his return, you know, and, and, they call, and they call your name out to tell you what, what you've been lucky enough to jag in the inheritance. You know, what an amazing promise, you know, to, 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 stand, to stand in New Jerusalem, you know, a place where there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no tears, you know, no more tribulation, no more heartache, but but forever with the Lord. Amen. Kevin.